As a member of the research group Classic Reformed Theology, it is my honor and privilege to introduce the synopsis of purer theology to you. My name is Henk van den Belt, and I teach systematic theology at the Free University in Amsterdam. I've been involved in this project of publishing, translating and annotating the synopsis of purer theology for many years. And I'm the volume editor of the second volume of the three volume series. So what is the historical background of the synopsis? And why in fact is it called the synopsis of purer theology? What's behind that name? To understand the background, it's important to realize that this book authored by four Leiden professors originated as a series of disputations. Disputations defended by students at the Leiden University. Disputations consisting of theses that had to be defended in front of the other students and sometimes also the professors of the university. The series underlying the synopsis was not the first series at Leiden University. In fact, that started at the end of the 17th century with Franciscus Junius, who started a series on systematic theology. Did I say the 17th? I meant the 16th century, of course, because it was in June 1596 that the first disputation of this new theological series started. The three professors at that time were Franciscus Junius, Franciscus Gomarus, and Lucas Traucatius Sr. And together with their students, they discussed all the topics of theology. After finishing the cycle of disputations, starting with the doctrine of God and ending with eschatology, they just repeated it and started all over again. We call these repetitions repetitiones in Latin of the first cycle. In total, there were six cycles, so the first cycle and five repetitions, with 251 disputations in a period of, nine, of 19 per year, starting in 96 and ending in 1609. So that original series, together with the repetitions, is the historical background of the synopsis. As you might know, at Leiden University, at the beginning of the 17th century, a conflict arose on the doctrine of predestination. Because one of the new professors, Jacobus Arminius, disagreed with his colleagues on this issue. He interpreted predestination from the foreknowledge of God and held that predestination is the fact that God chooses those who will be believe, foreseeing their faith in time. At least that was the conclusion that his disciples, his students, later drew from his teaching, the so-called Arminian, after Arminius, or Remonstrant position. This conflict arose in the context of this series of disputations. It was Arminius's turn as a professor to preside over a disputation on predestination in which he brought forth his views. But his colleague, Franciscus Gomarus, strongly disagreed with his views and opted for an alternative disputation, not a part of the series, but a separate loose disputation on the same topic of predestination, holding that predestination was not because of the foresight and foreknowledge of God, but because of the sovereign free decision of God. Well, this conflict 
as you might know, ended at the Synod of Dort. By the way, the series of disputations had already ended 10 years before that with the death of James Arminius. The colleagues at the Leiden University then decided no longer to hold series of disputations, although there were these loose or separate disputations. The Synod of Dort decided against the Remonstrants and for the contra remonstrant cause. And the doctrines of the Synod of Dort, the doctrines of grace, in the Arminian or in the Augustinian tradition are often summarized with the five letters of the word tulip, total depravity, unconditional election, limited atonement, because the atonement of Christ narrows down, so to say, to the elect and is not universal. Maybe it's better to speak about particular atonement anyway. And then irresistible grace and the perseverance of saints. That was the doctrine of grace in debate at that international synod of Dort. But it's important to realize that reformed theology in those days was much broader than only this issue or these issues related to predestination and the doctrine of grace. And that is what we see in the synopsis. Because after the Synod of Dort, Leiden University appointed three new professors. Next to Johannes Poliander, who played a role at the Synod of Dort, three others were appointed to teach systematic theology. These are the four authors of the synopsis, Antonius Tisius, Antonius Valleus, and later the Frenchman Andreas Rivetus. Together with Poliander, they started a new series of disputations in 1620, planning 52 disputations covering the whole of reformed dogmatics or systematic theology. The end result of these 52 disputations, when they were bound together in one volume, is the synopsis of purer theology. And of course, purer refers to the conflict at Leiden University. No longer the mixed traditions of Arminianism and Reformed Orthodoxy, even Homares and Arminius published a series of disputations together during that conflict, but now purified, codified by the Synod of Dort, purified with regards to the doctrine of grace, a new start in theology. And so these 52 disputations cover starting with what theology is and the doctrine of scripture and the doctrine of God onto eschatology, these 52 disputations cover the whole field of reformed theology. Certainly predestination and soteriology is part of the series and an important part, but it's not the whole thing. Reformed theology is much broader than that. And to illustrate the fact that the title purer, at least was understood by contemporaries, as a reference to that conflict, one of the remonstrant professors, who was no longer able to be a professor after the Synod of Dort, but disposed, Simon Episcopius, published his disputations later on, or they were published after his death. And in the foreword, the prefatio of these, this collection of disputations, the anonymous author writes about the disputations of the remonstrant Episcopius, 
if these disputations are freely compared with the Synopsis Purioris Theologiae, it would not be difficult to demonstrate that the title of purity, of which that publication is so proud, applies much better to them. So according to this Arminian theologian, the disputations of Episcopius were much purer than the synopsis of a purer theology. We are glad and thankful that we were able to finish this series of disputations in an annotated Latin and English edition in a three-volume series by Brill. But we are also working on an English alone edition because we want to spread the content of the synopsis to as many people as possible.